This is part 40 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of event bubbling in JavaScript. Let's understand event bubbling with an example. Let's first design a web page that looks like this. We are going to have three elements, div, span, and a button. And we want these three elements to be nested inside each other. We want the button element to be present inside the span element, and the span element should be present inside the div element. So here I have HTML with head and body sections. Within body section, first let's include the div element and let's include on click attribute for the div element. So when we click the div element, we want to alert a message saying div clicked. And within div, we want to display this message div element. And inside div, we want to have span element. And even with span element, we want the on click attribute. And on click of the span element, we want to alert span clicked. And within span element, we want to display this text. And then inside span element, we want to include a button. So input type equals button. Value equals click me. And again, with the button, we want to have on click attribute. So, and on click of this button, we want to alert the message saying button clicked. All right, so with this, let's run the page. Now, the look and feel of this is not the same as what we see on the slide. So, in order to get this look and feel, we need to apply styles for span and div elements. So within the head section, let's include a section for style. And here, let's define a style class. Let's actually name it style class. So we want this div to be displayed like a table cell. So I'm going to use the display style, display table cell. And then we want a border of one pixel solid black. And let's include padding of 20 pixels. And then finally, we want the text to be aligned in center. So now let's apply this style class to the div and span elements. So style equals our style class is, actually, it's not style. We use the class attribute to associate a style class with an element. And we want to apply the same style to span elements as well. All right, so with this change, let's reload the page. Notice that now the look and feel is the same as what we see on the slide. Now, notice that all the three elements have click event handlers associated. Now, let's click on the button and see what's going to happen. So when we click on the button, the event is raised by the button. Button control has got the click event handler. So click event handler process the event. So it says button clicked. And then now notice once I click OK, look at this, span clicked. So what did just happen? Now once the event was handled by the button, it got bubbled up to its parent. So button's parent element is span element. So span element handled the event. And then once span element has handle the event, it got bubbled up from span to the div element. And div element also has got an event handler for click event. So div element was able to handle that event. So that's event bubbling. So the process of event bubbling starts with the element that trigger the event and then bubbles up to the containing elements in the hierarchy. Now let's see what's going to happen when we click on the span element. Notice that you know, span element handles the event, and from there, it bubbles up to the div element. Now, let's go ahead and remove the event handlers for span and div elements. Now, we have the event handler for click event only for div element. And let's slightly change this message click event handled by div element 
So with these changes, let's reload the page and let's click the button now. Remember, click and span elements doesn't have event handlers for click event. So when I click on the button, notice that click event handled by div element. Now let's click span element. Click event handled by div element. Now let's click on div element. It says click event handled by div element. So due to the concept of event bubbling, though button and span elements doesn't have their own event handlers for click event, since they are nested inside a div element, which is the parent, you know, the event and and because of the concept of event bubbling, you know, the click event is still processed by the div element. So that is event bubbling. When the event gets bubbled, the keyword this references the current element to which the event is bubbled to. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. So we want to have three div elements like this, div1, div2, div3 nested inside each other. Now, when I click on div3, we want to change the border color of all the three div elements to red color as you can see. Okay, so let's see how to achieve this. First of all, let's um, you know include three div elements on the page. So div, let's give this an ID of div1. And within div1, we want to display this text, div1. And inside div1, we want another div. So let's copy that and change the text to div2. And inside div2, we want another div tag. So ID is going to be div3, and the text on that is going to be div3. Now let's change the border of div to 5 pixels. And let's reload this page. So we need to apply this style class so that we get the look and feel that we see here. So let's apply this style class to all the divs. All right, so with these changes, let's reload the page. So we have all the three, three divs there now with the black border, because that's what we have initially specified in the style. Now let's include a script section. And here, let's create a variable. Let's call it div elements. And then let's use the document object. So document.get elements by tag name. So we are going to get all the elements which are going to have this div tag. So this is going to return us all these three div elements. Now let's use a for loop here. So for where i equals zero, i less than div elements dot length i plus plus. div elements of i dot on click. So we are going to associate an event handler for the click event for each div element. So this is the function that we want to be executed when the click event happens on each of the div elements. So now notice within this function, I'm going to use this keyword. So this dot style dot back border color is equal to red. And let's alert a message, you know, saying 
which of the div elements border is changed. Now notice each div element has got an ID associated with it. So let's retrieve that ID. And again, to do that, I'm going to use this keyword. This will reference the current element on which the event is triggered. So this dot get attribute. And then to this function, let's pass ID. So we want to retrieve the ID attribute value. And then to that, let's append, you know, border color changed. All right. So now let's go ahead and run the page. Notice that when I click on div3, so the background color is changed, I mean the border color is changed to red. It says div3 border color changed. Now once I click OK, though we have clicked inside div3, the event get bubbled up. So it goes to its parent, that is div2. So once I click OK, notice that div2 border is changed. Once I click OK on that, it gets bubbled up till div1. OK? Now, is it possible to stop even bubbling? By default, the events are bubbled. But is it possible to stop even bubbling? Yes, you can. Um, to stop even bubbling, within um, IE8 and earlier versions, we use this event.cancelBubble equals true. With IE9 and later versions and all the other browsers, we use this stop propagation method on the event object. Remember, event objects uh, get passed to the event handler method. So within that event handler method, we can stop the propagation you know, from bubbling. So let's look at that in action. So what we basically want to do is you know, when we click on, let's say, for example, on div3, we want to change the border color of only div3. We don't want that event to be bubbled up and then ending up changing the border of div2 and div1 as well. Okay, if I click on div3, only div3 border should be changed. If I click on div1, only div1 border should be changed. At the moment, notice, if I click on div2, div2 and div3 border, I mean div1 border will be changed. If I click on div3, then all the three borders will be changed. We don't want that, you know, bubbling up. So let's see how to stop even bubbling. So here, this is the event handler function. Now we know that when the event is raised to the handler function, the event object gets passed. We discussed that in our previous video session. So the event object, once we have the event object, I'm going to say event equals event or vendor.event. The reason we have to use window.event is because in Internet Explorer 8 and earlier versions, if you want to get the event object, you have to use the window.event. Okay? So for um, compatibility reasons, I'm using or window.event. Otherwise, we can just use this event object. Now, if event dot, now what is the method that we use? with um, IE9 and later versions, stop propagation. So if even dot stop propagation, if this method is supported, then you know we want to use that. So basically, this is for IE9 and later versions and all the other browsers, OK? Because this is the method that we use to stop propagation in those versions of the browsers else we need to account for IE8 and earlier versions. With IE8 and earlier versions, we use event.cancelBubble equals true. So event.cancelBubble equals true. So with these changes, let's go ahead and run the application. So now we have stopped even bubbling. So now when I click on div3, notice that the background color is changed. Once I click OK, notice that the event is not bubbled up. Now let's reload the page. Let's click on div2. So div2 border color changed, but the event is not bubbled up. Okay, That's because we have stopped 
even bubbling. Thank you for listening and have a great day.